Hello, I'm David Ginder, one of the classical hosts at Colorado Public Radio Classical, and I'm here to host another virtual recital by my friends Charles Weatherby, violinist, and David Korvar, pianist. And before we begin, Charles has a couple of introductory remarks. Charles is the director of the Snake River Music Festival. Charles Weatherby. Welcome to our third virtual concert for the Snake River Music Festival. So glad you could join us today. If this is your first concert with us, I'd like to point out a feature that we are utilizing. On the screenshot, you can see the cursor is moving down to the bottom right corner where the icon marked CC is. And if you click on that, a red line will appear. You have turned on closed captions or subtitles on the YouTube video. And we have added some text from the score, the composer's words and directions to musicians, as well as a few observations of our own about the music. And if this is something that you would enjoy reading as the music progresses, go ahead and turn that on. If this would be a distraction, simply turn it, uh, keep it off. That's the default position for it. Um, but it may be something that you enjoy experiencing. Second, I would like to thank David Ginder for hosting today's concert and the other two concerts as well. Thank you, David, very much. Uh, and finally, I would just like to give a shout out to the artist Sunny Taizi. Those of you who have attended Snake River Music Festival concerts in the past are familiar with the iconic image of the rock in the Snake River that Sunny painted, as well as actually behind me two other of her paintings are in the background. What a talented artist, and so thank you for lending that image all these years um, for us to use in association with our music festival. We will take a little break during July, but we will be back in August with a couple more concerts, and announcements about the dates and times of those live streams will be forthcoming. So without further ado, let's get back to the program and once again, thanks for being here today. This virtual recital by Charles Weatherby, violinist, and David Korvar, pianist, is called A Fine Romance. In fact, there are three, actually there are five altogether, romances on the program, plus two sonatas. And we're going to begin with a very well-known romance by Anstine Dvorak for violin and piano, or violin and orchestra. This piece has some similarities to Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings, which started out as the slow movement of a string quartet and then was arranged for string orchestra in this case. Same for Dvorak. It started out as the slow movement of a string quartet, string quartet number five, and it was arranged for piano and violin or violin and orchestra. It's a slow, beautiful romance, just as the title suggests, but it also has some agitated sections in the middle and some strident sections. Charles Weatherby, violinist, David Korovar, pianist, performing the romance by Antonin Forjak.
This is a virtual recital recorded at Grusen Music Hall at CU Boulder. It's called A Fine Romance, and that was the first of actually altogether five romances on the program. There's a group of three and then one more standalone romance. That was the Dvorak Romance, played by Charles Weatherby, violinist, and David Korvar, pianist. So more romances on this fine romance program, two sonatas as well, and right now we'll hear one of those sonatas. This is the violin sonata by Ernst von Doknanyi. He was a Hungarian composer, lived in the latter part of the 19th century and well into the 20th century, he died in 1960. And he traveled and worked all over the place, in Budapest, of course, because of his, he was Hungarian, but also in Berlin and Vienna and London and in the US. 
He taught at Florida State University in Tallahassee for 10 years. The Violin Sonata by Ernst von Dochnani is in three movements. The first is Allegro Appassionato, and it is. The main theme is in a minor key, the, the sonata is in a minor key, but that main theme comes back in a major key. It's fun to listen for that. The second movement is also fast, marked Allegro. This sonata actually does not have a slow movement. That second movement is kind of a combined scherzo and intermezzo. And then the last movement is also a fast movement, and it has some similarities in terms of melodic ideas to the first movement. And actually, I said it doesn't have a slow movement. It's not that the slow movement is missed, because the finale has big, important slow sections, and the finale ends with that slow idea as well. Here on this fine romance program by Charles Weatherby, violinist, and David Korovar, pianist, is the Violin Sonata by Ernst von Dochnanyi.
Well, it's not a violin sonata that's performed all that often, but that should change, right? That was the violin sonata by Ernst von Dochnanyi, presented on this program called A Fine Romance by Charles Weatherby, violinist, and David Korovar, pianist, being recorded at Grusen Music Hall on the CU Boulder campus. So I mentioned this is called A Fine Romance, and we have now three romances by Clara Schumann. Clara Schumann, we celebrated her 200th birth anniversary uh, late in 2019, and she was a superhero, and I'm not kidding. First of all, she was a fine pianist and a composer at a time when women weren't supposed to do either. But not only that, she took care of her husband, composer Robert, for many years. He was ill for much of his life, and she raised I don't know how many children her own children and children from the extended family. So when you put all that together, the fact that she was able to write extraordinary music is just a, a celebration of her genius and of her stamina. Now these three romances are not piano pieces that have been arranged for violin and piano. She wrote them for violin and piano. Three romances by Clara Schumann performed by Charles Weatherby, violinist, and David Korovar, pianist.
This is a virtual recital called A Fine Romance. It was recorded at Gerson Music Hall on the CU Boulder campus by CU Boulder musicians, Charles Weatherby, violinist, and David Korovar, pianist. And on this fine romance program, the three romances for violin and piano by Clara Schumann. Well, we have one more romance on the program and also one more sonata. This is the violin sonata number two by Saint-Saëns, French composer, 19th century, lived a bit into the 20th century, died in 1921. And although his life overlaps with Debussy, Saint-Saëns wanted nothing to do with Debussy's musical innovations, what we call Impressionism. The Violin Sonata No. 2 by Saint-Saëns is in four movements. The first, overall the sonata has some similarity to Mozart, kind of a nod back to Mozart, but not this first movement. There are some harmonic ideas in here that Mozart would never have written never have even imagined, as a matter of fact. So that's the first movement. Second movement is a vigorous scherzo. The third movement is a beautiful slow movement, and it has a contrasting uh, kind of scherzo-like, little scherzo section in the middle of the slow movement, third movement. And then the last movement is a rondo, so it has a recurring theme throughout. And if you assign a letter to each theme, there's the A theme, and then B, and then back to A, and then C, and then A, and so forth. Here are Charles Weatherby violinist, David Korovar pianist, to perform the Violin Sonata No. 2 by Camille Sassons. <laughs>
Violent Sonata Number no. 2 by Saint-Saëns was premiered by his lifelong friend, the great 19th century Spanish violinist Pablo de Sarasate. And our performance there was by Charles Weatherby, violinist, David Corvar, the pianist. We heard the Violin Sonata Number no. 2 by Saint-Saëns on this virtual recital from C.U. Boulder by C.U. Boulder Musicians. Well, this virtual recital is called A Fine Romance, and we have one more piece on the program, and in fact, it is a romance. And before I introduce you to the composer of this romance, I want to introduce you to the American violinist Maud Powell. She was an important woman musician and encourager of other women musicians. Her life spanned the 19th and 20th centuries. She gave the U.S. premieres of important violin concertos, the Tchaikovsky Concerto, the Sibelius Concerto. She also played the Dvorak Concerto in the, in the presence of the composer. And she also encouraged black composers. For example, she commissioned a violin concerto from Samuel Coleridge Taylor. So that's Maud Powell. Now, we don't know quite how Maud Powell met the American composer Amy Beach, but they did and they enjoyed their company together, and they, they uh, remembered the fact that they were both born within two weeks of each other. And they also were very successful in the male-dominated music business. Well, the last piece on this program, called A Fine Romance, is Amy Beach's uh, romance for violin and piano. She wrote it for Maud Powell. In fact, the two of them gave the premiere. And that premiere was very successful, very warmly received by the audience. In fact, the audience insisted on a second performance of the romance, which they gave. However, during that second performance, Maud Powell's music fell off the music stand. But she kept going. She knew it. Here is the romance by Amy Beach, performed by Charles Weatherby, violinist, and David Korovar, pianist. <laughs>
This virtual recital is called A Fine Romance, and it has been. That was the romance for violin and piano by Amy Beach, performed by Charles Weatherby, violinist, and David Corovar, pianist, both CU Boulder musicians. This performance, this virtual performance, was recorded at Grusin Music Hall on the CU Boulder campus. Many thanks to CU for the use of Grusin and for the use of the piano. And also thanks to Ted Mulcahy and Mark Mickelson for taking care of the piano. I'm David Ginder, one of the classical hosts at Colorado Public Radio Classical. Thanks for joining us for this virtual recital. And until next time, be well.